Hi, good morning everyone. This is Nicole Testa Boston, the Deputy Director at FIA Tech. And I wanted to welcome all of you for joining us this morning on our Tech Tuesday uh, webinar. We're, we have one of our uh, FIA Tech members, Aviva uh, Simon Bennett, who will be presenting to us today on the defi defining the future of plant design. Uh, before we go ahead and get started and I introduce Simon, I wanted to uh, just go over briefly how to use the GoToWebinar system for those of you who may be joining us for the first time. Um, that toolbar is unique to you, so you can move that around or move it off your screen at any time by hitting that orange arrow in the left-hand corner. Um, you will, however, want to use that if you have any questions or comments or would like clarification on anything you see during the presentation. We, we welcome that and ask you to use the questions tab section there on the toolbar. You can type in anything there. Those will go directly to me. And when Simon has finished his presentation, um, I will facilitate the Q&A with him and go over those with him. Um, lastly, we will be recording this session um, and making both the audio and the slides available on the FIATEC website at fiatech.org. Uh, so with that, I want to go ahead and thank Simon for joining us today and introduce him. He is the Senior Product Business Manager with a background in civil engineering. Simon has over 12 years experience as a software product manager having worked for a number of commercial, off-the-shelf, and enterprise software companies. He has product-managed software to serve customers in the financial, airline, power, law enforcement, and military sectors. Simon joined Aviva in 2008, where his product management experience allowed him to play an important role in organizing the enterprise product portfolios, marketing, and strategy. More recently, Simon has driven the launch strategy and marketing for Aviva's new generation of plant design, Aviva E3D. Um, so with that, Simon, um, let's go ahead and get started, and, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nicole. Um, good morning, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you very much for taking time out of your schedules to uh, spend some time to listen to this webinar. Um, I've got about 30 to 40 minutes worth of materials, and in this presentation, I hope to give you an introduction to what the big picture is in terms of Aviva, and to give you some information about our new uh, product that we've, we're launching. We've we pre-launched a couple of weeks ago in, a, in our world conference in Paris. Um, so let me crack on through the slides. Um, and like, like uh, Nicole said, if you've got any questions, and then please type them into the box, and I'll have a go at answering them for you afterwards. Um, some of the technical ones I may not be able to handle, but by all means ask them anyway, because I can record them and answer them privately. So on the 12th uh, of October, a couple of weeks ago, um, we previewed the launch of our new generation of plant design products, which is called Aviva Everything 3D, which we're shortening to E3D. And this presentation I've created for you today is really just to help you to understand um, a few things, two very important things. Why are you doing it? So I'm going to help to answer the question, why is Aviva doing this? Uh, what is our vision? Uh, you know, what's the direction we're planning to take with this new generation of plant design? And what is Aviva E3D? What does it do? So over the next 40 minutes, I'll attempt to answer these questions and share with you Aviva's strategy for the new generation of plant designers. But just to make sure that we understand what the scope of this conversation is, this presentation, um, uh, in our product portfolio, um, we have a number of different capabilities. We have an integrated engineering and design strategy, which covers P&ID management and schematics, instrumentation, electrical, and 3D layout. And what we're really focusing on today, what my presentation is all about, is just the 3D layout element. So from a point of view of our strategy and our product offering, we're really only focusing on the design element of our portfolio. Within the plant portfolio in Aviva, we have a number of different capabilities. We split them into three headings, engineer, manage, and design. But for today, I'm just going to talk to you about 3D layout and design for plant designers. So let me tackle the big question first of all. What, why are you doing this? Well, Aviva already has a market-leading plant design system in PDMS. It's a fantastic product. It has some of the best plant design capabilities in the industry, and we've had that for many years. Because of that, we've managed to amass over 2,000 customers, and we have the fastest growing market share in the plant design software market. So in fairness, we're in quite a strong situation, and the question you might ask is, why would we do anything different? Why would we change our products? 
there are three massive factors that are influencing our decision to make this change. Uh, and I'll go through those three things right now. The first is that our customers, or your market, the EPC's market, is changing. And globally and nationally, the intensity of change across the power and process industries in the last few years has become unprecedented. Yes, our market is always changing. That's always going to be the case. But it's the pace of change which is making it difficult for us. And worldwide, there is a race to satisfy the increasing demand of energy and commodities. What's happening is this is forcing our operators, or the EPC's clients, into engaging in new projects in even more difficult environments, such as deeper water, Arctic regions, or sometimes politically sensitive areas. And as with all projects, these things come with more risk. And that risk is getting transmitted into all of the supply chain, where contractors and subcontractors are being asked to accept that risk. And it's being distributed to those that are willing and able to manage it. And constantly, the need for efficient, safety, and high quality projects needs to be guaranteed. There's never been more focus on this, specifically after um, the Fukushima disaster in the, in the nuclear power industry, and also Macondo, I guess, in the oil and gas industry, where regulatory bodies, governments, and even the public domain itself has much more attention on these industries. They are under more regulation requirement and under more pressure to be compliant. The second factor that's very much um, at the heart of this uh, need for us to change is that our customer's technology itself is changing. The competition in the laser hardware market is driving technology prices down and the technology itself up. And this is presenting more affordable laser scanning, which is easier to justify for brownfield or greenfield projects. Companies like Faro, Leica, ZNF, are all locked in competition for the lucrative laser scanning work needed for plant revamp, brownfields, or new builds, like greenfield opportunities. Their hardware is now easier and quicker to set up. It's more precise, and it can capture more data and capture over increasingly long ranges. Some of them can capture over two kilometers away. Laser scanning has moved from being a time-consuming and costly exercise to one which can be carried out in a morning. The trend in the hardware market is toward more, towards more compact units, more portable units, which will provide higher accuracy over short ranges. And this will allow for the equipment to be more ubiquitous on the construction site or in the fabricator's facility. But the trend in the software processing processing of this information, this laser information, has yet to take advantage of these hardware developments. Tools are still a bit disconnected from the main business critical applications for plant design and a bit clunky to interact with. Nevertheless, it's never been easier for clients, for operators and EPCs to justify the use of this technology for their brownfield and greenfield projects. Another factor here is that mobile computing is pushing through the focus on consumers and is starting to present opportunities for real business applications. Over the last two years, we've seen a proliferation of apps which provide support tools for our daily lives, such as checking bank account balances, or checking flight details, or even just playing games. The hardware and software plat platforms have yet to prove themselves in a true business-to-business -business manner. But last week, Microsoft announced the launch of Windows 8 RT and the new Microsoft Surface hardware. And over the upcoming months, we will see new tablets entering the market from Sony, Samsung, Microsoft, and Asus, and others, which have more powerful chipsets, more scalable technologies and interfaces, and more powerful onboard graphic processing. This next year, we'll see some intense competition in our view in the tablet space as Microsoft and their partners start to tackle the dominance of Apple. It's going to be a fascinating fight. But what this means for Aviva's customers is that there will be more choice presented to them, and I believe more focus on the value-added apps for business usage. And finally, and probably one of the most difficult to 
provide a strategy for is that the cloud computing is offering our market new ways of interacting with their applications and managing their information. This is actually the most disruptive trend for our customers and also, also for us as a software vendor, making us all ask the question, how do we want to consume our applications in the future and how do we want to consume the information in the future? Developments from Amazon, Google and Microsoft are providing opportunities for businesses to change their business as usual and try to adapt to the new technology. Naviva is working in partnership with Microsoft to understand how best to leverage this opportunity to help our customers to execute their global concurrent engineering projects in new and exciting ways. The third factor affecting our needs to make this change is that our customers' workforce, the EPC's workforce, is changing. In mature markets, we're seeing a great deal of plant design knowledge leaving the organization due to retirement. I would say that this has been more well documented in North America than any other um, uh, mature nation. And there's currently a race on to retain this knowledge and to protect the business differentiators and remain competitive. But in complete contrast, and in emerging nations such as India and South America, we're seeing a wealth of newly qualified engineers who are willing and able to be plant designers, but lack the experience and skills at present. And what they expect of their software systems and the level of interaction with those software systems is vastly different from those guys that are retiring. Viva somehow has to provide tools to support both of these communities and encourage them to work well together. So as part of our project and in anticipating a climate change within our organized, our customers' marketplace, we have looked at what we think will be needed to support plant design and modifications as we head into this new era. We have a project which we've called the Future of Plant Design, where we've investigated what we believe is needed. There are some few fundamentals that our customers have recorded and told us in repeated ways. Plant design systems of the future have to be quick to deploy. Contracts will be won and lost on how quickly the project can be delivered. Sophisticated software doesn't have to be difficult to deploy. The user interface has to be more intuitive to support faster levels of collaboration needed in new projects. Being able to work faster and with total accuracy will deliver valuable competitive advantage for our customers. Features and capabilities within these plant design systems have to be really easy to find and very obvious to use, the kinds of stuff that we're used to when we use apps these days. But mobile computing has to be incorporated, where mobile devices such as tablets will play a key role in project management and decision makers, giving them more agility and faster access to the information that they need to do design review and approval. And as our customers continue to be challenged with more and more ch difficult engineering and technical problems from their clients, they ask us in turn, as software vendors, to support those new techniques. So solutions that intuitively support all aspects of the plant design process will be the most compelling. Plant design systems must not only offer data integration support, but they must deliver checks and validation capabilities. So very careful about using the word automation here. We have no intention of automating the design process itself. It's a unique thing that our APCs have developed over many, many years. And actually, the design of engineering is a cognitive process. It must be managed by a human. But what can be removed from the engineer is some of the monotonous and error-prone activity of checking, validating, and auditing their designs in line with current standards, regulations, or corporate demands. And the final thing is increased visibility, which is essential to driving efficiency. A greater insight and control across the design and build chain will drive much needed efficiency gains and enable construction reworks to be reduced. So the market is changing, we know that. And we want to help our customers to lead this change. We see that we have an opportunity to find a new level of performance in plant design. 
by responding to what we know the mark will, market will need going forwards, some of which I've covered. But we cannot do this by just creating a new version of PDMS, our plant design system. We are making this new level with a new product, E3D, where we have the freedom to combine our acquisitions, our new technologies, existing and proven capabilities, and new developments in new and creative ways. So E3D is not a direct replacement for PDMS. It has more capability than PDMS. Aviva will continue to sell, support, and maintain PDMS with new releases, which contain error corrections and improvements every 12 to 18 months. It's really important to get that message across. PDMS will continue. The future of plant design is a project which is a multi-year mission for us to create the most comprehensive and efficient plant design system in the industry for new designs and for plant modifications. But this is a little too broad. When we're talking in our strategy team, it's very difficult to answer what is the most efficient plant design system. And we needed to really focus in order to create a vision to guide our developments and to give us a long-term direction for this new product. Our vision is to provide our customers with a product which will make possible plant design for lean construction. So let me spend a few minutes just walking you through what Aviva understands lean and lean construction to be. But its origins are from the 1950s when Aiji Toyoda, who was then the owner of the Toyota Motor Car Company, revolutionized the mass production ethic of the automobile industry by introducing a drive to produce twice as much with half the resources. A weak post-war economy in Japan helped to underpin a very deep philosophy to changing the approach to car manufacture. And over the next 30 years, Toyota went, out, went on to carve out 25% of the automobile market. This was, and still is, an astonishing achievement. Also, over the following decades, the principles that Toyota had created were very well documented, and many variants are known today by us, such as Six, to six Sigma, total quality planning, and just-in-time. However, the basic philosophy is often referred to as lean production or lean manufacturing. And Aviva understands it to be based around three very simple principles. The first is respect for people. This means empowerment at all levels of the organization, from the senior management team all the way to the guys on the shop floor, and being accountable for your work and being empowered to improve the efficiency of your working practices. The second principle is about eliminating the non-value add activity, in, in plain English, removing wastage. But actually it's more than removing wastage. It's about adopting a zero tolerance to wastage. For our customers, this could be material, which is waiting for something to happen, or in transit, or in storage, or in a laydown yard. That's wastage. But also, wastage is time spent reworking something which was wrong. This could be reworking in the design office, in the fabricator, or on site. Eliminating non-value add added activity really means no inventory of parts and no stockpiling. The final key principle is about maximizing the efficiency of the value added activity. This means continual improvement for the efficiency of producing the parts. Bending of pipes, cutting steel, welding, fabricating a skid or a whole module is regarded as value added activity and must be made as efficiently as possible. Basically, value added activity is defined as work which is done on a part. So if this approach proves to be so successful for the automotive market, why has it had little or no adoption for EPC projects? Actually, there's probably hundreds of reasons why it's been difficult to adopt this process. 
but we pick out two that we think are the key things that is holding it back. And we think we can see evidence and uh, an adaption to the lean principle that would help to overcome them. The first is that projects for our customers are typically very fragmented in nature, with different contracting, cultural, management, and geographic environments, which make it very, very difficult to adopt a unified philosophy. But the world is changing, and we do see signs in the market of contractual mechanisms that allow a more collaborative management of design data. And we also see many of our clients talking more about alliances, those that were successful, obviously. Aviva is providing support tools to help to accelerate their adoption. So the second major constraint is the one-off nature of our customers' projects. And this is actually the response I've normally heard from our customers. Each project that they have is, has different requirements, which they meet with different technologies and engineering. They're always located in different parts of the world, more so now than before. And they're delivered by diverse teams of engineers. Most of these projects are so unique that they offer very little chance for repeatable construction processes. Obviously, there are trends in the power industry um, where, and also in the mining industry where modular designs are helping to produce a higher level of efficiency, but there are still inefficiencies in the site construction itself. So if we take a second to consider the automotive industry and how it differs from our customers' EPC market, in the automotive industry, where, say, 10,000 cars with 100,000 parts are being produced, the designer himself has defined the dimensions of all the items way before the production starts. Statistical process controls are put in place to help the manufacturer to track the accuracy of the machines and to anticipate any wrongly made parts. Any production problems which occur are solved on the shop floor itself by stopping the production, changing the process, and maintaining any machines. There would never be a consideration to rework the design of the part. They rework the process. I can't imagine an EPC being able to stop the whole of the construction site to discuss the process. Simply no time is given to them. Pressure is too high to complete the project on time. However, our EPCs do have one luxury, and that's that the designers are working concurrently with the fabrication and construction teams. They are always there. And we can request them to make adjustments to neighboring designs to accommodate any of the changing circumstances on site or in a facility. What this means is that their designs can compensate for the realities. But they can only do this if they have the information to do so. How would they get that information? OK, so let's have a look at how this information might become available to a designer. These, these chevrons here represent maybe different phases of a project from front-end engineering design, say, through to commissioning. Project execution is always focused around meeting the deliverable deadlines and pushing information to the next internal customer, whether that be a fabricator or a construction team, or even the commissioning team. And all stakeholders are motivated to meet their goals and pass the material to the next consumer. And what happens to that information after it's been approved and issued is now the responsibility of the next discipline or owner. It's actually because of this, it's very easy for the information to become misaligned. Drawings which were produced originally from the design model may be updated outside of the design model in future, and data creep occurs. These may be small differences at first, but over the period of a four or five year project, they become very significant differences. The end result is a construction which does not always reflect the original intent. That's why it's so difficult to produce as-built documentation. But how this actually manifests is that feedback from the construction team to the design team is often forced by crisis, not by routine. The guys on site have to deal with unique problems specific to the construction, of which most of them they will try to deal with on site, 
in the same day. If it can't be fixed, then we'll move to the next day or week until a point comes where it's absolutely critical that this is solved. The spotlight returns to the design team and we have a stopped or major delayed site. So the key to achieving a lean philosophy in a one-of-a-kind manufacturer like an EPC project is about the routine feedback of information to the design organization. Laser data can be fed back to the designer as part of the fabrication and construction. And this would allow the engineer to evolve their designs in line with the conditions which occur at the facility or site. So what we've done is we've adapted the key lean principle here of respecting people to make it work for lean construction. And this innovation makes it possible to think of and plan for lean adoption across your businesses. So let's, let's investigate that a little more in depth and we'll talk a little bit more about what's inside the product to help make this happen. So we'll zoom in on the details of a design to construction phase here, the project execution stage, if you like. This image does rather create an illusion that the project is completely sequential. Um, we know that's not the case. Um, design does run in parallel with both the fabrication and construction, but it's, a, but it's a good way for us to focus on the linkages between those disciplines. Designs which were created within 3D models are often exported for detailing in other applications. And this introduces an unnecessary step in the process and an opportunity for errors and rework to creep in. Original layout designs can be changed by the detailer. We have a vision to combine design and detailing together to improve the overall design efficiency of the project. And we're on the first stage of providing this voyage with the first release of E3D by introducing a powerful drafting capability which allows for much more detailed 2D output. And as we move forward, we'll be focusing on integrating elements of our newly acquired steel detailing tools from a BOCAD and developing pipe fabrication outputs as well. Typically, designs which were created within the 3D models are also sent on to the fabricator, who in turn repeats a great deal of this work by creating non-intelligent 2D drafts of the 3D model and then detailing the fabrication drawings for the design. Once again, introducing an unnecessary wastage into the process, even more opportunity for error. Our vision is to rapidly produce accurate fabrication drawings to the fabricators directly from the layout model, directly from the plant design. However, probably the most exciting part of this vision is the fabricator feeding back information in the form of laser scans and possibly photographs and status information back to the design office for approval. But you can imagine a facility which routinely laser records their fabrications for transmittal to their clients and how much time and money would be saved by making sure that the goods they've fabricated meet the dimensional requirements of the site and where they do not the designer then being empowered to redesign some of the still-to-be-fabricated adjacent parts. We also expect that this feedback of laser information or dimensional control information would be extended out to the manufacturers of equipment, where the design team could finally answer the question, am I getting what I ordered? This way, we can bring the fabricator closer to the design team and helping them to work better together. In the real world, of course, there's a contract that often exists between the design office and the fabrication teams. But we think this is an opportunity to help them to work better. The combination of design and detailing allows us to also produce detailed and accurate layout drawings for the construction teams to work more efficiently. But not only this, we can provide access to real-time design information by use of mobile devices. Mobile devices which allow the constructor to be able to review the status of the design model and even take part in the approval of object status from the site. Once again, the routine sending of laser scan information back to the design team from geostatic 
or even mobile laser scans will provide a constant feed of information for the designers. Really, this is the revolution for the application of lean construction. It's all about redesign, not reconstruct. Of course, the end result of a lean construction is shorter project durations, which obviously will attract the client. But needless to say, that in order to cope with this new influx of routine laser information to the designers and to be able to adapt their designs to suit the specific construction or fabrication circumstances, there will be more work needed in the design office. How would this be funded? Well, we think this can be funded in small part by some of the savings made in the construction phase itself, but we appreciate that this may prove challenging because of our um, contract differences between the construction teams and the design teams. We're encouraging our operator customers to think of ways that they might be able to help make this possible through commercial or other means. And in the end, it's in their best interest to do this because they'll have quicker time to first oil or production. But of lasting benefit of this approach is that the information which is handed over throughout and especially at the end of the project is a much more accurate reflection of the actual physical asset. The digital asset itself is, an, is accurate, will help the operator to manage the commissioning and the production more effectively and with less errors. But this is all made possible because of this idea around the continuous feedback of laser information to the designer throughout the whole project. In order to make E3D support lean construction, we have targeted four areas where our product must be number one. The first for rapid project startup. The target for E3D is to be the industry's fastest plant design system to deploy, enabling projects to be set up in days, not in months. And projects that can be established in the shortest time, no matter where in the world they are based. In our product, you'll see a new user interface designed to make it faster to train new users and to make it faster for those new users to get up to speed in creating their project deliverables. The target for E3D is to be the number one system for design efficiency, introducing new design capabilities that will transform modern plant design with features such as integrated laser scanning, powerful drafting, and advanced 3D graphic presentations, which we've optimized for the daily task of plant modeling. And we believe it will enable project teams to make savings of up to 20% when compared to current systems. The target for E3D is to be the number one system for compliance. We see new checking and auditing features that will speed up the design review and approval. And these advanced tools will support the introduction of new users and new types of collaboration as customers strive to meet the design standards, safety requirements, and other regulations that they need to comply with. And the target for E3D is to be the number one system for removing rework in construction. A powerful combination of integrated laser scan data, design checking, superior graphics, and a support for new mobile devices such as tablets will enable our customers to save money in construction and increase their profitability. All of these new features and technologies will build upon the existing engineering and delivery strengths that Aviva is already renowned for. Firstly, our integrated engineering and design. E3D is part of this. Our multidiscipline and multi-user collaboration. Tools that are supporting the built-in data management and help for local customization of the applications to our customers' needs. And finally, our openness for third-party data, making sure we respect that our customers don't always choose our software. So we present to our customers two migration options from PDMS to E3D. And we believe we've packed so many exciting capabilities into this that we would hope for our customers to immediately adopt it. Maybe that's a little naive, but because we are well aware of the challenges that they face when adopting new products, 
and we also appreciate, appreciate that they really want to see the software close up. Nobody buys marketing. You can use E3D on top of a PDMS 12.1 project out of the box. We focused very hard on reducing the risk in our current customers' projects. So if E3D is installed on a current PDMS 12.1 project, it will work immediately on the same data out of the box. But we've gone a step further in order to encourage our customers to move on to E3D. And we've developed a unique capability which allows E3D and PDMS to run on the same project at the same time. This gives them the opportunity to trial this on project or in a sandbox if they want to test its, its real efficiency. So let me summarize for you what E3D is about. I won't be showing you any of the product itself, some screenshots of course, but I won't be demonstrating the product. In E3D, we are focused on some key areas in response to what we know the market wanted from us. We have integrated the laser scanning capabilities directly into the 3D interface itself. A future plant designer, we believe, will see the two worlds as the same. The reality of the fabrication facility or site and the theory of their design. The 3D graphics have been optimized specifically and tested against the, plant, the tasks of plant designing. We've made an interface which is easy to use, making sure that the key features needed by our plant design customers are easy to find and very obvious to use. Any 2D or 3D geometry interfaces are completely integrated within the interface. There's no need for downloading or installing any complicated gateways. We've included a very powerful 2D drafting which we've integrated with the model. This is a 2D drafting tool which can actually be creating 2D drawings directly from the 3D model itself. And we've worked very hard on making sure that the system is able to scale to the levels of performance that our customers now demand of us for their large networks and large global projects. To finish off, we've made sure that there is little or no disruption within our customers' IT infrastructure, and they can run E3D in parallel with PDMS, Aviva Engineering, and Aviva Diagrams. And all of these things, we're confident, will save our customers money, and actually we'll work with them to help to prove that this is the case. So just before I finish off, what follows is a couple of screenshots of the product and specifically focusing on this whole area around the laser and the 2D and the 3D geometry interface. So what you're looking at is a pre-release version of Aviva Everything 3D. On the left hand side is a bubble view, which is a photorealistic but 3D rendered um, view from one of the laser scan um, installations, one of the laser scan stations. And in it, you can see the merging of the real world of that interior and the world of the designer who is creating some revamp. On the right-hand side is a representation of the same clustered information, but in a point cloud, also rendered in color. We believe that the plant designer of the future will work in this mode of working more than in the regular world just of design information itself, where the two worlds are merging because of the ubiquitous nature of laser information, which is being posted and transmitted to their projects on a daily or weekly basis. They'll be able to design for the real environment, and we will help them to build empathy with the construction site or the fabrication facilities but also at the same time empower the engineering team to take control of the approval, approval process. This environment of working between the point cloud data and the 3D data will become more ubiquitous for a plant designer and we will continue to work on tools to help making this a unified environment for design. 
you'll be able to model in this environment. You'll be able to measure differences and distances. You'll be able to snap to objects in the real working space rather than within your own grid. Hopefully, this has given you a good taste of what we intend to do and where we are. Um, if you need any answers to any questions and you want to tackle them directly, please use the email address which is on the screen. There's also um, a, a website which we have been creating over the last six to nine months which has lots and lots of tidbits about the product and lots of reveals and a number of business papers. If you just type in Future of Plant Design into Google, you'll find us. Um, by all means, email. I'm happy to take any of those questions that you've got in your mind that you don't currently have at the moment. But otherwise, Nicole, I'll hand back to you to see if there's any current questions. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Simon. Um, and for all of you who may have joined late, um, if you have any questions or comments or would like any clarification on anything you've heard, uh, you can type those in using the questions tab. We do have one question, um, Simon. Someone that wants to know um, about class excuse me, clash detection? Yes. And if this is supported? It's, uh, it's not supported in the first version, but it's definitely on plan for future versions. To be able to clash detect between the 3D bubble views and the 3D uh, point cloud and the geometry is something that we definitely are tackling. We already have it in some of our existing products, and we just need to get that moved into this E3D product. It's definitely on the cards. Uh, can you talk at all about what databases um, E3D uses? Yeah, of course. Um, as you probably know, or for some of you that have, are aware of PDMS itself, our plant design system, we have a proprietary database which has been uh, used right from when we first released the product in 1976. Um, and that technology that we created back in the day has proven itself to be able to be used on the biggest and most complex projects in the world. We see no reason to change that technology. And in fact, the core concepts and base technologies will continue to exist underneath E3D. This is why we can run them in parallel. And this is also why we can help our customers to not have to go through any expensive retraining or costly uh, new in IT infrastructures. So this is proprietary database backend to E3D. Thanks, Simon. Um, I have a question. You know, in Fiatech, we're doing a lot um, with user acceptance of mobile IT and how, mm -hmm. how these tablets and whatnot are being used in, in various aspects of the life cycle. Um, what, what sort of, what, what sort of um, requests are you hearing from clients, and how is that driving your product development? Yeah, great question. It's actually a really fascinating top topic. About two or three years ago, we started talking to our customers about the adoption of tablet technologies. And at the time, we, we, we drove that conversation by waving um, uh, an Apple iPad um, with a couple of apps that we'd created just to whet their appetite. And the feedback that we got was very mixed. Uh, some of our customers immediately refused the adoption of this type of tablet hardware because it was not intrinsically safe. It did not have the right certification level for, um, for its actual hardware. Uh, it certainly wasn't ruggedized to the degree that they would need on site. Other customers, I would argue maybe in the lower tier of our customer base, were much more open-minded about the adoption, having already implemented Wi-Fi networks across their plant and having some very interesting usage. Um, I'll give a couple of examples because they're fascinating. Uh, one came from a Chinese uh, organization that looks after electricity grid who was saying that the maintenance of all of the linear infrastructure all of the um, pylons is an area of interest where they, they sit in a truck or a van and they, they carry 150 documents with them and they drive out to the infrastructure and make red lines all over the drawings. They were asking us to help them to provide a mobile solution to make that much easier to do in remote locations. And at the same time, I had an oil and gas organization talk to me about all of the wellheads in the desert in um, California where they were trying to uh, manage the same situation, driving remotely and gaining access to information. So it feels to me like a lot of the applications at the moment our customers are asking are about viewing only or reading information in a linked form across the design um, database, if you like. 
when it comes down to the interface itself, um, what we are understanding and what we've learned over the last two or three years at the, is that the scope of apps, the scope of these mobile apps, is very much smaller than the scope that's permitted to us when we're creating our rich desktop client software. Um, an app might typically have um, 10 features, whereas something like PDMS or E3D might have 150. Um, so these things are much more constrained in terms of what they'll be able to deliver. Uh, we think actually the time is right because of the change in infrastructure and what we'll see happening over the next 12 months as Microsoft and Apple uh, begin to relock horns over the tablet marketplace. Um, we think our customers will start to adopt these in much more serious ways in their plants. Um, thank you. I do not have uh, any other questions from our from our shy group today. <laughs> Most of them are probably working from home if they were affected by the storms yeah, um, sure. that we've been having. But um, thank you so much, Simon. That was really uh, helpful. We'll be posting a copy of this presentation again at the www.fiatech.org uh, website, so you'll get a copy of the recording and audio if you want to share that with a colleague or pass it on. Um, and I do have several folks who are saying thank you for a great presentation. So, Thanks, um, guys. <laughs> have a great day, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers.